I'm Lorna McPherson and I'm a Dairy Consultant with SEC Consulting. Today we're going to speak about some of the management practices that are useful in helping reduce dry matter losses in clamp silage. There is an accompanying fact sheet available on this subject on the FAST website. So dry matter losses, what we mean by that is a loss of nutrients or feed value. And these are estimated to be as high as 25% when taking into account losses in the field during wilting from effluent and from microbial deterioration during filling, storage and feeding out of the clamp. So the first stage to consider to reduce dry matter losses is wilting. We want as fast a wilt as possible, ideally within 24 hours, although grasses that have a high clover content may require longer, up to 36 hours. We're aiming for a dry matter of between 28 to 32 percent with clamp silage. At this dry matter, then any losses from wilting, storage and also effluent will be reduced. If we have effluent, we've got a loss of sugars and a loss of valuable energy. The wilting process can be speeded up by tedding the grass. Ideally, this should be done immediately after cutting as water loss is greatest in the first two hours after cutting. But be careful not to overhandle dry grass as this can cause leaf shatter and reduce the overall protein content of the silage. We also need to factor in chop length as well. For silage is over 28% dry matter, a chop length of around an inch, two and a half centimetres is acceptable. However, with very wet silages, the chop length needs to be increased and it's recommended to have a chop length of between eight to 10 centimetres for silages at less than 22% dry matter. If we chop wet silage too short, then this can increase the amount of effluent production and valuable nutrient losses. The next important phase to consider is consolidation. It's really important to squeeze as much air or oxygen out of the grass as possible and this will create good anaerobic conditions for a fast, efficient fermentation and a quicker drop in pH to preserve the grass. For good consolidation, the grass should be tramped in layers of no greater than 15 centimetres. But if the silage is wet and below 25% dry matter, then we can increase the depth of the layers to up to 25 centimetres, but no more. Do not overfill the clamp above the walls as density will tend to reduce in that area. We also want to avoid over consolidation of wet grass because this can increase effluent production and also increase the risk of slippage in the clamp. If we do get clamp slippage, then this can lead to spoilage in the area where the clamp has slipped. Here's a good tip. If you can push your finger into the face of the silage pit easily, then it was not consolidated well enough. This means that it's easy for air to get in behind the face and cause secondary fermentation, spoilage and a loss of valuable nutrients. Once the clamp has been sufficiently tramped, it's important to have an airtight seal. This means using side sheets. So side sheets are really important to create an effective seal because clamp walls can be porous to the air. Now, ideally we should have a, a big overlap on the top of the pit, at least a meter, if not a meter and a half. But this is a classic example where we've not got a good overlap and we can see there's been quite a bit of water coming in here and causing spoilage to the silage. So there's quite a bit of waste here at the shoulders. Repair any damage or holes in the black plastic cover immediately. Use of oxygen barrier films are really useful to reduce the amount of oxygen getting into the top of the pit and causing spoilage and waste. These oxygen barrier films are really useful at reducing waste on top of the silage pit and they go underneath your black plastic cover. You can see the top of the pit here, how clean it is. There is very little waste and that's fine for feeding out. Once covered, ensure adequate weight on top of the clamp. So using tires, lay them edge to edge for even weight distribution. Gravel bags are also useful around the edges to create a really good seal. Rubber matting is also helpful for good even weight distribution on top of the clamp, as are straw bales and indoor pits. Silage additives can really help improve the fermentation and preserve more nutrients within the silage. There are a number of different additives available, ranging from bacterial inoculants, feed grade preservatives, and some contain enzymes to help improve fibre digestion. Some additives are better suited to high dry matter silages and some are better suited to low dry matter silages. So make sure you choose the additive that is going to be the most suitable for the type of crop that you are preserving. 
Additives are beneficial if the sugar content of the grass is below 3% and this can be tested for prior to cutting. Lastly, we can try and minimise dry matter losses during feed out. Keep a tidy clamp face, use a block cutter or shear grab and try and minimise the amount of surface area exposed to air. In hot weather, if the face is heating, take half grabs so that you can cross the face quicker in ideally no more than four days. Another tip is not to remove too much silage from the face. Only remove as much as is needed. Don't have big piles of silage sitting on the floor for feeding out the next day because once it's cut, it's already going to start to deteriorate. And do not feed any silage that is visibly mouldy as this can contain mycotoxins and reduce animal performance and affect health. For more information on reducing dry matter losses in clamp silage, see the fact sheet on the FAST website.